It is currently 8.30 in the morning and today we are doing another 24 hour reading challenge. I'm not kidding, it literally just turned 8.31. <laughs> you guys should already be familiar with the 24 hour reading vlogs on my channel. I do them quite frequently. I think I do them at least once a month. But if you're not familiar with the 24 hour reading challenge, it's basically where I read for 24 hours straight. And today it's going to be a special edition of the 24 hour reading challenge because I will be reading fall books. So these are books that either take place in the fall or are just good books to read in the fall because they're thrillers or they're spooky and I thought it would be really fun to film this video since we're already in September and spooky season is upon us. I don't care if you disagree with me, spooky season has begun in my mind. <laughs> I also have a cold and I love filming these 24 hour reading challenges when I'm sick because it gives me an excuse to just stay in bed and read and not feel guilty about it so that's what we're going to do today. And to kick off this challenge I'll be starting with The X Hacks by Erin Sterling. This book does take place in the fall and it has all the spooky vibes that I love during the Halloween season. I'm really excited to start it. I've heard so many great things about this book. So many of you you guys have recommended this book to me which is why I actually ended up buying it because I've never heard of this book before until so many of you were commenting on my fall book recommendations video that I should pick this one up so I did. If you're unfamiliar with the axe hacks it basically follows a young witch who has had her heart broken by a male witch and to nurse her broken heart she decides to cast a spell on this male witch. At first she doesn't really think that her spell work and that it was just a state of her being drunk and fooling around but then nine years later the male witch comes back into town and things start to go wrong which is when the young witch Vivian realizes that her spell actually worked and now she has to work together with the guy that broke her heart to break the curse and to make sure that her town doesn't fall apart all right it's time to start Yay! I also think the cover of this book is so pretty. So love that. Extra points. Oh my god, there's a cat on the prologue. So cute. I love cats in case you somehow don't know this already. Like literally, I'm obsessed with cats. Prologue. The first sentence is never mix vodka and witchcraft. Love that. <laughs> Look at the cute little cat. So chapter one starts off nine years later. I don't know why I completely forgot about the time jump. So that actually took me completely off guard, even though it does state that there's a time jump in the synopsis. The main character Vivian was 19 in the prologue. And now that we're starting chapter one, she's actually 28. Again, I don't know why that time jump surprised me, but it did. Nine years is a long time, you guys. That's insane. But let's continue reading oh so the prologue was told from vivian's point of view and now chapter one is starting with reese point of view who is the male witch that broke vivian's heart nine years ago interesting i didn't know it was going to be dual pov and i really like that <laughs> Okay, so I just read the first 50 pages of the book and I have to say that I'm enjoying it a lot so far. It's actually pretty funny in certain parts. It's not as spooky as I thought it was going to be. And since this book is paranormal fiction, I was expecting a little bit more of the spooky vibes. We're still at the beginning stages of the book, so maybe the spooky vibes come later. I'm taking a quick little break to make a fruit smoothie. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm sick, I just crave fruit. Literally, I've been eating watermelon, pineapple, strawberries, and now I want a fruit smoothie. So, going to add some milk and then some chia seeds for extra protein. Now it's time to blend. had a 
sandwich get delivered because I'm starving. Going to eat and read. I'm actually almost done with this book. I'm more than halfway done. I did get really tired at one point and I did close my eyes for like 20 minutes. That's honestly because I'm just sick. I'm at the part of the book where Vivian and Reese are working together to break the curse that Vivian put on Reese. Hey mama. Uh, when she was 19 because magic in their town is not working at all like every time someone does a magic spell it doesn't go right it goes completely wrong and it's actually pretty funny excited to see how it ends i just finished the axe hacks it took me about five hours and 30 minutes i think that this is a solid three and a half star it could be a four star rating but honestly i'm leaning towards three and a half i really enjoyed it i think this is a great book to read in the fall season it has all the good spooky vibes without being terrifying and i always get comments on my horror book recommendations of people being you know nervous that these horror books that i recommend are a little too scary for them this one is not scary at all it kind of reminds me of the movie halloween town if you know you know but an adult version because this book does have some spicy scenes in it and I was not expecting the spicy scenes at all that kind of took me completely off guard if I'm being honest like I knew it was romance but I didn't realize it was like an adult romance for some reason I thought this was YA but it definitely is not YA so keep that in mind if you're not really into spicy romance books then maybe skip this one I mean the spicy scenes are honestly towards the end of the book so maybe you could just skip those parts in the book because overall i do think it's a great book to read during the halloween season it has witches it has ghosts it has a black cat it has a really beautiful autumn small town vibe i live live for small towns like i literally want to live in a small town so bad or at least own property in a small town because the vibes are just immaculate during the holidays and this book definitely gives you the immaculate fall vibes in a small town the scenery with the changing leaves with the different um halloween shops and i also love that this book is very like family center it is second chance romance i thought that vivian and reese were so cute together i wasn't super invested in their relationship if i'm being honest but i did enjoy the characters if that makes sense I actually didn't know that this was part of a series so there is a sequel to this book which follows vivian's cousin Gwen who I absolutely adore in this book and I'm definitely going to pick up that book and read it hopefully it takes place in the fall as well because I will love that now it's time to pick out another book to read so I have a long way to go you guys <laughs> all right so i think the next book that i'm going to read is one of us is next and this is the sequel to one of us is lying i actually read one of us is lying during one of my first ever 24 hour reading challenges and i really enjoyed that book i've been saving the sequel for the fall season i feel like mystery books are such a vibe in the fall i guess this one takes place right after one of us is lying and if i was a different group of friends who are stuck playing a deadly truth or dare game which sounds very interesting i am going to take the book sleeve out because it's really annoying and i'm just going to read the book i love how it's just simple black with silver text i just think it's so pretty i kind of wish they sold the book just like this if i'm being honest these sleeves are so annoying so sleepy <sighs> and it's only four like i just want to take a nap right now <laughs> But I'm on page 102 of One of Us is Next. I just don't know if I'm enjoying it more than the last one. I can't remember, honestly, if I enjoyed the last one right from the get-go. I think I did. It was so long ago that I just don't, don't even remember. But literally, I have not put this book down since I've started reading. And I really like that it is dual POV. It's actually multiple POV. It's one of the things that I do remember about the first book. And that's one of the things 
things that I really enjoyed because it makes the story go by really fast and that's definitely something that I am noticing with this book. I got to page 100 and I was like, wait, I'm already on page 100? Like I only have 272 pages left to read and it's going by really fast. And also some of the characters from the first book that were being accused of murdering Simon have made an appearance in this book, which is also very nice to see how much their life has changed and gotten better after overcoming that whole being accused of murder thing. <laughs> you know? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just tired. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> In this book, someone who is anonymous is texting Bayview High students the truth or dare game. So they have 24 hours to choose either truth. So one of their secrets will be revealed to the whole school or dare. They have to do something that the anonymous texter dares them to do. And so far, the majority of the students have been choosing dares and the dares have been pretty tamed. Nothing crazy has happened. So I wonder if that's going to change at all. I was expecting the dares to be more like intense and they're not intense at all i mean some of them are a little intense but not as intense as i thought they were going to be so i wonder if the anonymous texter is going to spice things up soon just got to part two just finished reading one of us is next um this wasn't a bad book at all i actually really enjoyed reading it i didn't feel the need to put it down at any point like i actually wanted to continue reading it to find out the big reveal i didn't love it as much as i loved the first book i very much prefer one of us is lying for that reason i think i give this book like a three and a half instead of a four star rating because i gave one of us is lying a four star rating and it just doesn't feel right to give this book a four star rating when i didn't love it as much as the first book in the series and i didn't really love the ending you guys i feel like the ending left us with huge plot hole and i know that the author is planning to write a third book i think it comes out next year so i don't know if the third book is going to pick up right after this one but i definitely feel cheated out of an ending <laughs> because i wanted to know what was going to happen to a specific character I don't want to say who because I don't want to spoil the book for you in case you haven't read it and it also wasn't as entertaining as the first book like again I didn't want to put this book down but with one of us's line I definitely felt more invested in the characters and in the stories I don't know I feel like I just connected with the characters a lot more in the first book versus in this book I didn't really like anyone I didn't hate anyone either but I just didn't connect with any of them but overall I still would recommend this book if you you were a fan of the first book give it a chance i know that some people loved this book so i may have a unpopular opinion who knows i will definitely read the third book in the series because i do want to know what is going to happen next in this world but if you read this series let me know your thoughts on it i would love to see if you feel the same way or if you disagree with me either way just let me know in the comments below now it's time to pick up a third book for this reading challenge i'm going to pick out a book but i think i'm also going to get comfortable i did like take off my contacts and wash my face so i do want to put on my pajamas and get cozy for the night it is currently around 8 p.m i don't know if i want to pick out a book from my bookshelf or if i want to read on my kindle i typically just read on my phone on the kindle app there is a book that i downloaded a few days ago and it's the seven and a half death of evelyn hardcastle i wanted to say evelyn hugo because that book is so popular but this is a book that was highly highly recommended by so many of you guys on my channel and it's also a kind of like murder mystery whodunit type of book so i think it's perfect for this reading challenge so i might read this one on my phone or on my ipad because i feel like it's easier to read on my phone when i'm laying in bed and i definitely want to lay in bed while i read this book i don't really feel like holding a physical book right now 
so i think that's what i'm gonna do quick synopsis if you're unfamiliar with this book it's basically about aiden bishop knows the rules evelyn harcastle will die every day until he can identify her killer and break the cycle but every time the day begins again aiden wakes up in the body of a different guest at blackheath manor and some of his hosts are more helpful than others it gives me clue vibes the board game if you know you know i also watched the movie clue not too long ago like a few months ago and it was actually really good <laughs> despite it being so old I don't know I really like old movies like that and this book definitely gives me clue vibe so I'm actually really excited to start it I am going to change into some PJs get comfortable and continue reading <laughs> morning just got out the shower and i'm getting ready to finish up this 24 hour reading challenge today which this is honestly my favorite part of this challenge is the last like stretch because by the second day of doing these challenges like i'm over it and today i'm most definitely over it i want to move on <laughs> I also didn't detangle my hair at all and it needs to be detangled, but whatever. I'm going to finish up this reading challenge by reading As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. This is the final book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I've heard so many great things about this book. It's actually really interesting because this one follows the main character Pip once again was about to head to college but instead of investigating another person's murder or another person's disappearance and this one she's investigating her own stalker I'm curious to find out like who's stalking Pip and again I've heard so many good things about that book so I'm excited we're going to read it is a pretty thick one but I can't tell if it's because it's normally just a thick book or if it's because the book that I have is a large print version but it's over like 600 pages maybe i'll be reading this for the rest of this challenge i don't know we shall find out it's still pretty early it's only about 8 a.m so we're going to be reading for the rest of the day let's do this <laughs> how much I hate Max Hastings such a big piece of shit of a human being like wow mm. and then can we talk about Detective Hawkins for a second he is so bad at his job he literally is the worst detective in the history of detectives I'm kind of sad because you can clearly tell that Pip is struggling with the aftermath of everything that happened in the second book. She feels like she can't really go to anyone for help because no one will understand her or she just doesn't want to put that burden on the people that she loves. So she's turning to other outlets which I feel like are not going to end well for her at all. I just wish she would ask for the help that she needs. But she has definitely gone through a lot of personal growth. The girl has been through it. She has gone through a lot, so it makes sense that she's dealing with so much PTSD. Like, she needs to catch a break. Oh my gosh, really? Is this what we're doing? I guess so, huh? This is what we're doing today. I made it, you guys. Another 24 hour reading challenge complete. <laughs> had to quickly throw on a jacket because I realized I had a huge stain on my shirt and that wasn't cute, so <laughs> had to rectify the situation by changing shirts. I'm officially done with this 24 hour reading challenge. But let's talk about As Good As Dead because I have some opinions on this book and they may be unpopular opinions. Let's talk about it. This book was not bad at all. I definitely think is a solid ending to the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. However, it's not my fave book in the series by any means. I still very much prefer the second book. This one took a very unexpected 
expected turn for me i mean i saw one of the twists coming like i was able to figure out pip stalker pretty early on in the book so that wasn't a surprise but then there was a second twist that i didn't see coming and i don't necessarily agree with i know it's a fiction book but the ending just was like so unrealistic to me and i was just like wait what and it, it actually wasn't even unrealistic to me because i'm sure shit like that happens all the time unfortunately hopefully not all the time but you guys know what i mean i didn't like the ending for pip's character i didn't like the ending for ravi oh my god he has my heart i did tear up at the end with those two like they broke my heart but i just didn't like the big twist the big reveal towards the end of the book and what pip did if you know you know i disagree with two wrongs don't make a right sort of thing i mean i would recommend it if you have started reading the good girl's guide to murder series you might as well finish up the series and read the final book but i don't love it and i still think the second book is way better i don't even know what to give it i think i give it like a three and a half out of five stars maybe four stars i don't know because i gave the second book in the series a four star rating and i don't feel right giving this four stars when i didn't love it as much as i loved the second book with that being said that is pretty much it for this 24 hour reading challenge this one felt a lot more difficult for me just because like i mentioned i am feeling unwell i've been feeling under the weather this challenge was definitely a little bit more difficult for me compared to the other challenges like i definitely took a lot more breaks and i feel like i read a lot slower in this challenge regardless i feel like i read some really good books in this 24 hour reading challenge so i'm happy with the outcome and yeah that is pretty much it for today's video if you enjoyed watching don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i have a ton of other reading challenges on my channel if this is your sort of thing make sure to hit that subscribe button i would love to have you a part of my little community here on youtube and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Tell them to subscribe.